So what exactly is the definition of a bubble? People buy simply because they believe that everybody else is going to buy. You get what is called a bandwagon effect. And from time to time, you then get a situation where prices go far too high. And that is really what we call a bubble. Bubbles are characterised by volatility, with shares swinging from wildly over to wildly underpriced, often in a matter of minutes. Robert Schiller from Yale University talked about uh, bubbles arising from irrational exuberance. And what he's done to actually measure bubbles is he's defined um, excess volatility to mean the degree to which stock prices are, mar are much more volatile than the underlying fundamentals, which in theory they're tracking. There are also more specific types of bubble. The first form of bubbles are what might be called um, bubbles of belief or fads. These are bubbles that are really driven by hype. The tulip bubble in 17th century Holland was a good example of this. Flowers were traded for up to 10 times the annual wage of a skilled craftsman, or in exchange for a six-bedroomed house. One bulb sold for 6,000 Dutch florins at a time when a ton of butter cost just 100. In 1637, prices collapsed, meaning they were no more valuable than onions. Britain's South Sea bubble of 1720 was another bubble of belief. Set up to trade in South America, the South Sea Company's promise of huge growth led to fevered speculation. Sir Isaac Newton, who bought shares in the South Sea bubble, made an enormous amount of money, sold the shares, he was fine. And then he saw it going on up and he bought again and he lost it all. After losing £20,000, he observed that he could calculate the movement of the stars, but not the madness of men. James Montier calls the next type of bubble an intrinsic bubble. These are bubbles in fundamentals rather than uh, actually bubbles in, in prices. So um, the behaviour of the financial sector in the last uh, seven or eight years might be regarded as uh, an intrinsic bubble because they geared up. So it looked like they were actually very profitable, but in fact it was all just leverage. Another type is known as an informational bubble. Certain parties in the market will know things that other parties don't, and they may not transact on that information. So not all information is properly reflected in prices. They tend to be very stock-specific rather than um, market-level events. On a wider market level, the price increases in UK housing from the mid-1990s until 2007 are seen by many economists as a classic bubble. In my view, the big rise in house prices in the UK and some other countries in the last 10 years is a bubble. Some people argue that with the low interest rate environment we've had in the last several years, with the lack of housing supply and so on, that, that um, there's the high prices of houses are justified. Um, I, I don't think that's right. Um, I think that what's happened is we've seen people convinced that house prices would forever rise. And they've been buying bigger houses, more expensive houses than they otherwise would need. And so we've actually had uh, excess demand created by the view that house prices would always go up. Uh, and I think, for me, that's what justifies calling it a bubble. <laughs>